Hey guys, Rexasaur here, and welcome to the next episode of Total War Warhammer Lore, where today we'll be talking about Bretonia. But before we go on, I firstly need to apologize for the amount of, well, the little amount of videos there's been lately, and that is because I am in the middle of moving country, and on Monday 4th I will be back um, in my country, so on Tuesday you can expect a fuckload of videos. Secondly, this video and the description, the early part of this video on Bretonia, will be scripted and when we get to the units I will be talking about my own unit types and stuff like that. So anyway, let's get on with it. Bretonia, located west of the Empire, just over the mountains, the Kingdom of Bretonia is a beacon of light in the world. While the Empire faces attack from every side and is slowly starting to be snuffed out, the Breton neighbours and allies remain strong, like an image from the Knights of the Round Table. While the Empire is an elective monarchy, with counts electing one of their own to be Emperor, Bretonia is a more traditional style of feudalism. The first son inherits the throne, while the Duke pays him fealty, and the filthy peasants who pay them fealty. While it's easy to only see the knights riding into battle in formation, they are followed by minimally equipped and often zealously driven peasants, from common men-at-arms to the slightly more effective longbowmen. While the Empire needs every man it can get, the Bretonian knights tend to be more choosy on who they let fight alongside them, and why shouldn't they? For the knights of Bretonia are credited to having the greatest cavalry in the old world. The best way to show your loyalty to the king is to bring only the best levies to the army when the call is made. While Sigmar is seen as the god of the Empire, in Bretonia he is seen only as a man of equal renown to their founder who followed in the man's footsteps. When the Empire was founded, Noble Sigmar invited the warlords of Bretonia to join him in hopes of fully unifying humanity, but the cultural differences between the two were too great, and the warlords near unanimously rejected his offer, wishing to follow their own path, a path that seems all too similar to the Empire they refused to join. Like the Empire, greenskin orcs are also native to the lands of Bretonia, and as it is with orcs, their numbers started to reach a saturation point. The warlords who had renamed themselves dukes were starting to get overrun by savages. Sulieu and Grand Burel were the first to fall, and others soon followed as they were in a desperate struggle of survival, till Duke Gilles le Bastogne rose to power. Leading a crusade against the Greenskin, the man renowned for having slayed dragons, Smergus, early in his reign, the prestigious Gilles managed to rally many of the remaining dukes under his banner. The army, despite his grandeur, did not meet much success in battle. Setback after setback, and Gilles' army was pushed back to the banks of a lake, with orcs and death on either side, all expected death on the morrow, till a truly miracle befell Duke Gilles and his army of knights. For as Gilles knelt before the lakeside to drink of its pure waters and pray for strength, an ethereal and heavenly beautiful woman arose from the mists, leaving the Bretonni army aghast and afraid. Gilles was the first to make a move, raising the blood-stained and tattered banner of Bastogne high. Inspired by some genius and desperate madness, he cried out, Lady, would thou bless mine banner? He then dipped it into the lake at the lady's feet. Whence he drew it forth and raised it high again so all could see, it was still dry and fully restored, only now also emblazoned with the glowing icon of the golden grail. Other dukes and knights then scrambled to follow his example, asking the lady to bless their sword, lance or war horse for the coming battle. Finally, the lady held forth a large gilded chalice overflowing with light, giving it first to Gilles and then his companions to drink from, and thus regain their strength to do what is necessary to win. Gilles and his two most loyal dukes became the first grail knights, and below the banner of the Lady of the Lake, the Bretoni won their first great victory against the Greenskin. Victory after victory, the armies under the banner of the Lady of the Lake swept aside the Greenskins, driving them from the land. Dukedoms were liberated, their army grew, and by the time of his death, Gilles was not called Duke, but King. Bretonia's success didn't stop there. For many more campaigns against different foes, far and near, Bretonia and her knights have ridden to victory, backed by the power of the Lady of the Lake. So there you have it. That's the history of Bretonia, as scripted by... Levive, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, his channel or whatever user page will be in the description below, and I'd like to give my thanks to him. If you like these scripted things, then please do say. I'm sure that Levive would be happy, uh, more than happy to script more for me. Uh, if not, then I'll just do as I've done for normal. But anyway, thank you very much for watching that part. Now we're going to move on to the units. So Bretonia, in my opinion, anyway. Um, well, it's very based on France, obviously, from what you can get. They're called Gilles de Bastogne. They have these 
French names and the way I, I can pronounce them because I'm French, so it's great. Um, and this re this is very represented by the units that they have. They have things such as Grail Knights, as we talked about in the uh, story. Grail Knights are these incredibly powerful knights, firstly, and then they've been blessed by the Lady of the Lake, so they have incredibly strong uh, magic resistance and incredibly strong... Uh, they have magic attacks, I think, as well, which is, like, really powerful. Or I think they get, also like, really good protection against magic attack, if I remember correctly, from playing against them in the tabletop. So if they were ever to be in Total War Warhammer, they would be the kind of anti-magic kind of unit. You'd have to destroy them with either a strong unit of spears or a uh, strong unit of, say, like, a war machine of some sort. Or, like, you wouldn't be able to use chaotic powers against them because... They're like the total purest unit in the field. They're there to just wreck chaos and destroy all things magical with their own magical protection. Um, then you have normal knights. I think they're called uh, realm knights, uh, which are basically grail knights but without the magical protection. But they're still kind of really powerful. Bretonian knights are some of the most powerful in the tabletop game. Um, that said, cavalry in itself is no longer a powerful force in the tabletop game. But I'm sure there's going to remedy that with the uh, upcoming updates that ha apparently are coming as well to the tabletop so I'm getting doubly excited now. Um, as we talked about when it comes to footmen, Bretonia doesn't really have a lot of really good footmen, they have a lot of peasantry, uh, peasantry at arms, uh, they have longbowmen which are okay but they're not incredible. Also peasants have the ability to access things such as the uh, trebuchet which is one of the most powerful and most accurate uh, war machines on the battlefield, if I remember correctly, um, and they're you know they're pretty good. I mean, it's it's the equivalent of the difference between a catapult and a trebuchet in um, Medieval Two, if you've played that game, which I'm sure you have, because um, you know you get the trebuchet, which is much more accurate, much more powerful, whilst you get the catapult, which is a bit less powerful, but it's still like a bloody catapult. You know, you can take that to the face, you're gonna die, kind of thing. Um, what else you get? Well, you get things like super, his superheroes? Heroes, like the Lady of the Lake, who is the mighty goddess of uh, Bretonia. Um, I don't know if she's a play. Well, I don't know. If there's going to be heroic and um, special characters in Total War Warhammer, then if she's going to be there, it's basically like asking a god to just go around. But her magic is very buffy. Like, she has very little offensive magic. So it's going to be like getting your Grail Knights to be even better, like have an even more powerful charge. Because in the tabletop... Um, cavalry uh, rides much faster. Obviously, there's a speed aspect to it. They ride much faster, but they also get buffed on the charge, and the way that that will probably be implemented will be with a charge buff to that unit kind of thing. Um, what else was I going to say? Oh, yeah, Bretonia have something very strange compared to the others' uh, factions on the tabletop. Anyway, they have something called the Lance Formation, where units usually of cavalry are between... Well, you can be as many wide as possible, uh, as you want, sorry. But mostly it's between four and five wide. Bretonia are unique in the way that they can have something that is three wide and as many long, and they have something called the Lance Formation, which allows the first three to attack, and then the the sides of the whole formation to attack in their Lance Formation, which is really, really powerful. But the other units don't have, so they're probably, it's basically the equivalent of the Diamond Formation in Total War, which I'm sure every cavalry will get. And if they don't, every faction will get, sorry. If every faction doesn't get that, then it will be exclusive to Bretonia, which is pretty cool. Um, Bretonia also have access, flying units-wise, to Pegasus Knights. Um, so they're cool, I guess. They're basically just Pegasus Knights. They're not very powerful on the tabletop, but I'm sure that will change on the on the battlefield of Total War Warhammer. Um, but yeah, Bretonia is one of those tabletop uh, factions who haven't been updated in a very long time. And a lot of Warhammer players are still waiting for that new update. So it's very possible that they will be updated uh, for when Bretonia gets added into Total War Warhammer, which will be in several years' time. Which means that we might see new units that I haven't discussed right now, such as they might get dragons or they might get new types of knights or better infantry, which I doubt, you know, kinds of stuff like that. They might get the um, ability to get crossbowmen or something like that. So it's very possible that this video, apart from like the uh, story behind it, won't change, but the units might change quite a bit because they still haven't been updated on the tabletop. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a like and a comment below. Um, please give thanks to uh, Laviv, who's made my 
um, script. I can't pronounce your name, and I do apologise, but it's been very nice to get something scripted for once. Um, so there we go. Thank you very much for watching, and I will be seeing you next time.